Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the chapel service at Memphis Theological Seminary. We are honored that you have joined us today for a time of worship and praise. We are gathered here to give thanks for all that we have received from God's good hands, to praise God's holy name, to acknowledge and confess our sins, and to hear God's word. Let us open our hearts, our mind, and our spirits as we draw near to God and celebrate our creator's infinite goodness and mercy. And let us now join together in the call to worship, which is from the book of Psalms, chapter 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Our God eternal, giver of life, creator of all humankind. In the name of Jesus, we pray for chapel service today. With uplifted praise to our Lord, reaching in exaltation to glorify thy holy and righteous name. The one who alone does great wonders, turning the tides of day and night, summer, winter, and fall. Who can know the endless acts of the mighty God we serve? For it is unto you, O Lord, that we live and move and have our being. We honor you, Lord, such a wondrous God unto whom we have answered the call. Here am I, Lord, send me, I will go. Lord, where will we go? Let us go unto the hurting and to the outcast. May we go to the unjust judge. Let us go to the hopeless and the broken. Let us go and share compassion and hope, proclaiming the release in the name of our Lord. Send us, O Lord, to go, to yield, to surrender, to reach, to heal, to touch, and to proclaim rest in the day of our Lord. Send us to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus and the God of peace. We pray for all. It is in Jesus' name we do ask these things. Amen. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Jesus calls us for the tumult of our lives, wild restless sea. Day by day his sweet voice soundeth, saying, Christian, follow me. As of old apostles heard it by the Galilean lake, Turn from home and toil and kindred, leaving all for Jesus' sake. Jesus calls us from the worship of the vain world's golden store. From each idol that would keep us saying, Christian, love me more. In our joys and in our sorrows, days of toil and hours of ease, still he calls in cares and pleasures, Christian, love me more than these. 
Jesus calls us by thy mercies. Savior, may we hear thy call. Give our hearts to thine obedience. Serve and love thee best of all. Please join us for the litany of ministry. O God, who sent Jesus into the world, not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life to set others free. Shape us for your ministry. Claim us, O God, for your service and direct us toward your will. You have graced all members of Christ's body, one by one, with gifts of the Spirit to fulfill their vocation, to lead lives worthy of your calling, to be workers who have no reason to be ashamed, to shine as lights to your glory. You have granted each of us the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. You give grace according to the measure of Christ's gifts. And some are called to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. Grant together that we may all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son to the full statue of Christ. Through your grace, O oh God, May we lead a life worthy of the vocation to which you have called us. Claim us, O oh God, for your service and direct us toward your will. Amen. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresh threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that was taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. Good morning, I'm Jody Hill. I have the great privilege of serving as president of Memphis Theological Seminary. And today it's my deep pleasure and honor to introduce my friend, our preacher today, Dr. Ann Hames. Dr. Hames is a member of our board of trustees here at Memphis Theological Seminary. She received her BA from Bethel College and both her MDiv and DMIN from MTS. She has served as the senior chaplain at Bethel University for the past 23 years, long suffering and great joy. She's been married to Dr. Joe Haynes for the past 39 years. Joe works as an emergency room physician in the McKenzie area. Together, they have three adult children and seven wonderful grandchildren. She loves to read, 
attend various types of worship services, everything from smells and bells to Pentecostal healing services and everything in between. She's currently writing a book about her experiences as a Christian university chaplain. She loves to help nurture things and people and then watch them grow. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Ann Hanks. It is a joy to be here and I am very honored. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Holy God, we love you. We praise you. Thank you for your word, your word written, your word spoken, and your word made flesh, your word sung, and your word acted out. Lord, please use it. Speak to us boldly. Open hearts and minds to see, hear, and understand what you would have us to know. For we ask all these things in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And all of God's children said, amen. Tell you a quick story. There was uh, two parents that were comparing notes one Sunday morning. And one parent was had two kids. And the two kids uh, sometimes getting two kids dressed on Sunday mornings. I mean, so help me, you just, ah, it, it doesn't matter if you're clergy or if you're not. It can be extremely awkward and hard to get two kids dressed for church. And one parent was always late. And the kids would come in and tow, usually fighting and arguing. Another parent, I don't know, they always got their kids there. Seven kids. They had seven kids, and quite often they were a little crumpled looking, you know, the hair wasn't exactly right, and, and they looked a little, you know, disheveled maybe, but, but basically they were fine, and uh, they always showed up, and always on time. The first parent was started talking to the second one and said, how do you do it? I want to know how you do it. How do you get seven kids here dressed on Sunday mornings and make it on time? I just, I am just blown away. How do you do it? I can't even get two. The second parent said, oh, that's easy. They sleep in their clothes. I mean, I just <laughs> let them sleep in them and, and they, you know, they, they always show up on time and, you know, we, we, it's, it'll be okay. It'll be all right. We have, as we have all learned as students at this wonderful se seminary, there are two basic stories where a person is kind of transposed or has a vision or, or something happens out there. And all of a sudden, a person has an experience with the Lord and is taken up into the heavenly realm and experiences a worship service. Now, the first of these is Isaiah 6, and we use it. We were all taught by Dr. Hudson and various others to use that as a model when we are planning worship services. The other one is Revelation 4 and 5, which is a praise service when the Apostle John is walking on the island of Patmos and has this wonderful experience and sees the Lamb of God. But out of these two worship services that we have. Let's look at the first one this morning that was read for us. In the king, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted and seated on the throne and the train of his robe filled the temple. Now one, let's look at this. Isaiah, probably just your average guy going through the motions during a worship service, how many times have we been there where it's another Sunday morning? You know, sometimes you feel like they do come around every four days, but, but you got to come up with that sermon and, and okay, we can do this. And, and I've got to uh, conduct or lead another worship service. And uh, the butterflies slowly calm down. Although 
you still have a few from time to time, like when you come speak at uh, to preachers of ministers, to teachers of ministers. But Isaiah is there, and chances are, if this was the year that King Uzziah died, the prophet Isaiah had probably seen Uzziah. Isaiah had probably seen Uzziah and seen all the pomp and the circumstance and all the wonderful things that go along with the king and, and the people and, oh, it must have been glorious. And the prophet Isaiah says, that ain't nothing compared to what I just saw. That was nothing. I mean, nothing. He gives this beautiful explanation. Angels are around with six wings and with two, they cover their face. With two, they cover their feet. And with two, they fly and they call to one another. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of your glory. What a marvelous, marvelous experience that the prophet Isaiah must have had. It had to be just, just absolutely wonderful. At the sound of their voice, the doorpost and the threshold shook and the temple was filled with smoke. And then all of a sudden, Isaiah has this revelation. He says, wait a minute, I don't need to be here. I don't have any business being here whatsoever. I've been in the presence of kings. I've been in some nice places. I've been to the holy temple. I've been to wonderful places and, and experienced great things. But I've never experienced anything like this. And I have absolutely no business being here whatsoever because I'm a sinner. And not only that, I live in a society full of other sinners. There's no escape. There's absolutely no escape. And I have no business being here whatsoever. He says, I'm ruined for I'm a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. He's seen the King of Kings. Then one of the seraphim, does something real interesting. He takes a tongs and he goes up to a fire and he grabs a coal and he touches Isaiah's lips. Now, the Hebrew word that is used for this is not just that a coal touches his lips. Basically, it cauterizes his lips. They are burned. They are changed. And this is all part of probably the painful experience that the prophet Isaiah goes through in receiving his call. And he touches it and he says, you can do it now. You have been transformed and you can do what you've been called to do. Then I heard one of the voices of the Lord say, who shall I send? Who will go for us? And Isaiah says, here am I. Send me. Send me. There's a couple of things. And then he's given the message that he is to preach as a preacher for the Lord. And go tell this people, be ever hearing, but never understanding. Make the hearts of the people callous, make their ears dull and their eye, close their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. Not exactly a feel good kind of Joel Osteen sermon, okay? All right, it, it's not good, it's not good news. And I love Isaiah's response because my, Isaiah basically says, how long I gotta do that? 
<laughs> I don't think this is going to play real well. And uh, how long do I have to uh, go about this sermon of gloom and doom? I'm not really sure about that, but I want to go through with that. And the Lord continues on until the cities lie ruined and without habitation, until the houses are left deserted and the fields ruined and ravaged, until the Lord has seen everyone far away and the land is utterly forsaken this isn't getting better this message is not getting better and though the tenth remains in the land it was again to be laid waste but the terabith and the oak leave stumps when they are cut down so the holy seed will be the stump of the Lord. This is an image that we quite often see of the prophet Isaiah. Imagine going through and cutting off trees, cutting trees, cutting trees, cutting trees, and just the devastation that is involved when a mighty, mighty oak dies and falls to the ground and crashes down. And then spring comes, a long, hard winter, but spring finally comes. And all of a sudden, you see just a little bit of greenery coming out from the bottom, out of the bottom, as if to say, I'm still here. I'm, I'm, I'm still here. The mighty oak fell, but I'm still alive. Even when we as clergy are called to go to difficult places and to do difficult things, let us never forget that there's always hope. There's always hope for anyone and everybody in every situation, no matter what they may be going through. There is always good news. And that is the hope of Jesus Christ in the transformation that he provides. Now, for just a second, let's, we've seen this whole situation, Isaiah having this experience, and let's, if you will, zoom out for just a sec and look at the big picture. Do you think Isaiah had any idea of what he was getting himself into when he said, here am I, Lord, send me. Here am I. Yeah, send me, Lord. I'll go where you tell me to go, and I'll do what you call me to do. And then he gets the message, and he says, how long do I have to do that? Huh? And it doesn't get better. And yet, that is what he is called to do. We, too, can expect a wild ride when we answer the word of the Lord, go, Lord, send me, send me. There's been so many times that uh, I thought as I went through this journey called ministry that I thought, I don't want to do this anymore. I, don't, I, I just, I really just don't want to do this. And Jesus, you can take this job. You can, you can flat out take this job. I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't sign up for that. I don't know, Lord. I don't I dare. I love the words of the prophet Moses, who looks in, at one point at the people of, looks at, to the Lord when he's looking at the people of Israel. And he says, they're your people. I didn't give birth to them. They're yours. Do something with them. I don't care what you do, but just do something with them. And it, I do not want it to involve me whatsoever. And yet the Bible still says, go. As I was preparing for this sermon, I felt a very real sense that the Lord was telling me, to tell you all, first of all, there's always hope. There's always hope, no matter what. And here's the second thing. 
that maybe, just maybe, the Lord is calling us and calling you specifically to do something that you never thought you would do, to go where you never thought you would go. I encourage college students from time to time, I say, talk to the saints, talk to the old folks in your church and just ask them all of a sudden, the, the saints of old and say, has your life turned out anything like you thought it would? And sit back and listen to the stories. How many of us say, if you follow Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, say, I never saw that coming. Mm -mm. <laughs> that is amazing. I am blown away, and I never, ever thought that would be the situation. Everybody's shaking their head, yes. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, been there, done that. I uh, graduated from MTS, and was expecting to be, most women in our denomination as a Cumberland Presbyterian, most women end up in small rural churches out in the country, out in the sticks. And I am married to a wonderful man who basically said, honey, look, I'm an ER doc. A car wreck's a car wreck's a car wreck's a car wreck. A heart attack's a heart attack. I don't care if I practice meth medicine in inner city Memphis, or I practice out in some rural area. Let's go. Let's pray to the Lord and see where the Lord leads us to go. And I said, thank you, Jesus. Okay, so, so I thought I trained to be a minister of third agers. I even took a course, I don't know if they still offer it here, on death and dying. And I took that course and I wrote out my own funeral service and I was prepared to work with third agers about how to deal with people that are in retirement and are getting close to retirement, the age that I am now, what I was planning for. And all of a sudden I got a phone call one morning and I said, uh, I answered the phone and they said, we are interested. We're looking for a new chaplain at Bethel University. And um, we got two questions for you. Uh, one, uh, are you interested? And can Joe move? Can your family move? We were living in Cookville, Tennessee at the time. And I said, yes and yes. And they said, okay, we'd like to uh, have you down and, and look at you as the possible chaplain at Bethel University. I said, Okay, sure. Yeah, I was, I was flattered to be asked, but hung up the phone. I said, that'll never happen. Uh-uh. Plus, on top of that, I'm an urban person. I grew up in Nashville. I grew up all in New Orleans, Louisiana, and in Fort Worth, Texas. And I, I like urban areas, and I like people, and I like shopping. And McKenzie has none of it. <laughs> Absolutely none of it. It is a town that Walmart left, if that tells you something, okay? All right? Uh, you can go find some glorious, you can find fashions. The latest fashion is at the Dollar Tree, and that's the only place we got. That's it. So you better like it, or else, you know, Amazon does deliver. But, but what, do you, what do you do? What do you do? And I thought, it did, hey, we got a McDonald's now, so we, we've arrived, okay? We, we got a McDonald's, so, which they didn't have when I was a student there. So I said, that'll never happen. Plus, they won't want me. I'm planning on dealing with third agers. I'm taking courses on death and dying. I don't know anything to do. Plus, I never was kind of a youth ministry sort of person. So I just don't see how that's going to work. My husband looked at me and said, woman, he doesn't say that often, which is very <laughs> wise of him. Woman, ye of little faith. He said, can we at least pray about this? And I said, all right, okay. So we went into our bedroom there. We had three kids and probably several of their friends running around the house playing. And it was just basic chaos in the house. And we walked into our bedroom, shut the door, got on our knees and said a prayer. Literally, this was the prayer. Jesus, work it or shut it. Your call. 
what you want. That was it. We got on our knees, work it, work it or shut it. We don't care. We'll do what you want us to do. I could go into a lot of details. I won't today. But the things that started happening that were just unbelievable. And God called me into ministry with university students. And you know, one thing I think that has helped my time as a minister at a university setting is because I didn't take those courses in youth ministry because I treat them like adults. I'm like, honey, you're 18 years old and I don't have to talk to your mom and get a permission slip. So, I mean, you know, you need to make a decision and it's time for you to get with it and decide if you want to go to college or not. What you want, what you want. And one or two students have told me that uh, the fact that I treat them as adults and not as youth has been attractive. I have learned and I have been transformed and I have gone places I never thought I would go. In my ministry. Here's what I want to encourage you to do. Here's, here's the point. First of all, stay in the word daily. Read the word of God daily and not just for class and not for just for sermon preparation. Stay in the word. Stay in a systematic approach towards studying the word. Just for you as a person, it is important. It is important. And then allow God to lead you to do things you never thought you were going to do. To go places you never thought you would do. You thought that you were going to work in an urban center and the Lord says, no, I want you to go to this place or this place or that place. I want you to go deal with people of a different race, different from you. And I want you to learn from them and I want you to learn from them and they can learn from you about the transformative power of Jesus Christ. The Bible is full of people. The Apostle Paul, Mary Magdalene, the woman at the well. Who can forget the woman at the well? And Zacchaeus, just to name a few, of people that had a transformative experience. But like the prophet Isaiah, don't think that Saul became Paul. Okay, that happened. But that he wasn't continued to be transformed. And it wasn't a daily experience. And that it wasn't a just a one-time occurrence. Allow yourself to hear the Lord boldly as you continue in your ministry. A prayer that I've only started praying with my sincere heart every day now, partly because I'm old and uh, are getting older. And I have learned to trust him more and more. Is Lord, here am I, send me, take all that I am and all that I have and use me for your glory. And to pray that prayer every single day. And then sit back and watch what happens as God blows your mind. You ready? It's not a one and done deal. The Lord transforms lives and he continues to teach and lead and guide us as his faithful servants. May we always be open to his instruction and to his leading. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. 
Holy God, we love you. We praise you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the call. Thank you for the call to the ministry. Continue to shape and mold us. To use us as willing vessels for your glory. Oh, Jesus. Teach us how to trust you more and more. Until we come to be in your presence. And sit at that great banquet table. We love you. We praise you. Thank you for Memphis Theological Seminary. Continue to shape and mold it into what you want it to be. And then do the same with us. For we ask all these things in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And all of God's children said, Amen. Thank you so much for that incredible message. It, it really, I uh, you know, spoke to all of us, uh, students and faculty and all that are watching today. It, um, it, it, uh, oh, the places you go when you follow Jesus. What amazing message that is. And, and to be reminded that there, there is always hope. So thank you for sharing that with us. And, and a reminder that the Bible says to still go. So thank you for that. So as, as let us sit with this message that's been shared with us for a second and reflect on what it means to us to say, here I am, Lord. I'm the Lord of sea and sky. I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in deepest sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make the darkness fly. Who will dare my life to dim? Whom shall I sing? Here am I, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go. O oh, Creator God, who made earth and sky and sea, who breathed the very breath of life into our being, ground us in your love. Stretch us in our upward reach, our steady climb out of darkness. Deepen us in the depths of holy waters. Wash us and cleanse us. Equip us with the armor of righteousness. Give us crystal clear vision in the night. Illuminate our path. Purify our hearts. Sanctify our lips with a live coal from the burning bush of long ago. As your loving servant, God, send us to the far corners of the earth and within the safe confines of your loving embrace. May all our tomorrows shine. May you redeem our lost days and help us discover the sweet joys of today. May seraphim fly and cherubim dance and angels gather as we walk with you. Hear us, Lord, as we tread gently along the pathways of life to meet you at journey's end. 
All of this we ask and pray in your holy and sacred name. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Hans, for your wonderful message and being here with us today. Let us now receive our benediction. Let us unite our hearts in prayer. O oh God, thank you for the anointed, the called, those who were chosen for such a time as this. Thank you, O oh Lord, for your daughters who speak and proclaim and protect your people as Esther did, standing up for truth and justice, being brave and courageous and compassionate for her people. Thank you for Ruth and Naomi, who taught us the bonds that connect us, that special kinship of souls, is tethered not by blood, but the spirit of everlasting love. Thank you for Mary's vision, Phoebe's faithfulness, the welcoming presence of Prisca and Junia. Lord, we thank you for our sister Anne, who walks boldly in a fearful world, spreading light in a darkened cosmos, proclaiming the word to eager ears and grateful hearts. We dwell together as sisters and brothers in your beloved family of believers. We celebrate as your children, one family, one God, Elohim, the many faces, dimensions, reflections of your loving countenance as they merge, come together. It is your smile we wear, our lips which speak in one voice, one tongue, one heartbeat, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>